Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church, everybody. We hope everybody's been enjoying their week. We hope everybody's been enjoying the Feast of Tabernacles this week. We're going into the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. I'm your brother, Zakwa. This is your brother, Kafafo, and we're Hebrew Readers Church. For anybody that's new, please tune in with us. Um, we thank you for joining us. If there's anything that you do not understand, please send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com or write in the chat below. We'll be glad to answer your questions. To all of our church family, Shabbat Shalom to everybody. We hope everybody's been doing well today. Um, Ahaya has been keeping everyone. Um, Brother Kasafo, you got anything before we get started on this uh, part four of the Levi lesson? Just thank you all for your support and patience with us and getting these teachings out. And having good edification and hopefully it's helpful for everybody, particularly the tribe of Levi, and uh, glad to get this last one out, and be on the lookout for other lessons that will be coming up randomly as we're going reviewing the videos and reposting them for clear and simple edification. So thank you all for your patience with us. Right. Amen. All right, without further ado, identifying the tribe of Levi part four. Kafafo. Sure. All right. Thank you, brother. You can always find the PDFs on the website on the Doctrine Video Notes tab. Now, let's continue in the Testament of Levi to learn what would befall the Levites. If you can pick up a Testament of Levi 10, verse 1 to 5, please. All right. Uh, Testament of Levi chapter 10, verse 1. Now, therefore, observe whatsoever I command you, children. For whatsoever thing I have heard from my fathers, I have declared unto you. And behold, I am clear from your unholiness and transgression, which ye shall commit in the end of ages against the Savior of the world, Messiah, acting Elohimlessly, deceiving Israel and stirring up against it great evils from the Lord. Definition for. Allahimlessly or unholiness is the same word in the Greek. Right. Is impiety. That is wickedness. Piety is a lack of reverence for Allah. This confirmed that Dan's words were true, that all the spirits of wickedness attend upon Levi, because we see Levi struggle with wickedness and acting Allahimless. And this all shows that we would not have the fruits of the spirit within our hearts, though our outward persona we try to pay our right. Through wickedness, we are also deceivers, using guile to get what we want or lust after, even as the chief priest did to the people in their lust for power. It was the children of Levi who stirred up the people and deceived them to have Yahweh killed and bring his blood upon Israel and our children, according to Matthew 27 and 25, which has brought great evils from Ahia for getting him killed. Judas Iscariot, the Levite, and the chief priests, according to Matthew 20 and 18, made it happen, and all were of the tribe of Levi. Continue, please. And ye shall deal lawlessly together with Israel, so he shall not bear with Jerusalem because of your wickedness. Levites deal lawlessly. We do what is right in our own eyes and find justification for our actions. And it doesn't help that anger also gives us our own peculiar vision by the net of deceit to think what we do is justified. The wickedness of Levites is better understood through the definition of the word. In the Greek G4189, wickedness means depravity. And depravity is moral corruption. The Greek definition goes on to say, that is specifically malice. Concretely, plots, sins, iniquity. Remember that malice is the end result of being overcome with anger after being stirred up from other spirits. 
Levites struggle with malicious deeds or thoughts. It's not uncommon for Levites to plot against you or to want to get you back if you wrong them or if we feel that you wronged us. In G4189, the definition, the Thayer definition for wickedness is evil purposes and desires. And the evil inclination of mind that Asher spake of causes our purposes and desires to be wicked, even when the thing we do seems to be good because our intents aren't right, since we usually do things for our own gain. Continue, please, in Testament of Levi. The veil of the temple shall be rent, so as not to cover your shame. And you shall be scattered as captives among the Gentiles, and shall be for reproach and for a curse there. Levites, when looking at family history, come from the slaves or Negroes background paternally from the scriptures. Okay, continue, please. For the house which the Lord shall choose shall be called Jerusalem as it contained in the book of Enoch the righteous. Levi, knowing that he must beware of fornication, got married because a married woman is a tower against death to her husband, according to Sirach 26 and 22, because the marriage bed is undefiled and he can't commit fornication sleeping with his own wife. So that helped him. He also didn't take a wife for lust, but uprightly like Tobias. In Tobit chapter 8, verse 7, he didn't take a wife until nine years after the admonitions from Isaac, showing he was patient, walking in singleness of heart in the fear of Ahaya, expending his labor on good works until Ahaya gave him a wife, even as Reuben instructed to do in order to be delivered from fornication. So we can understand is rushing to do it is not wise. You have to take your time. Can you continue in Testament of Levi chapter 11, please? Testament Levi chapter 11, verse 1. Therefore, when I took a wife, I was 22 years old, and her name was Adina. And she conceived and bare a son, and I called his name Gershom. For we were sojourners in our land. And I saw concerning him that he would not be the first rank. And Kohath was born in the 29th year of my life towards sunrise. And I saw in a vision that he was standing on high in the midst of all the congregation. Therefore, I called his name Kohath, which is beginning of majesty and instruction. And she bare me a third son in the 34th year of my life. And since his mother bare him with difficulty, I called him Morari, which is my bitterness, because he also was like to die. And Jacobet was born in Egypt in my 58th year, for I was renowned then in the midst of my brethren. And Geshem took a wife, and she bare to him Lamni and Simi. And the sons of Kohath, Amran, Issachar, Hebron, Oziel. And the sons of Merari, Muli, and Moses. And in the 84th year, Amran took Jacobed, my daughter, to him to wife. For they were born in one day, he and my daughter. Eleven years old was I when I went into the land of Canaan, and twelve years when I slew Shechem, and at thirteen years I became priest, and at twenty-two years I took a wife, and at forty-four I went into Egypt, and behold my children, ye are a third generation, and my hundred and fifteenth year, Joseph died. Let's get the admonitions he gave to his sons when Joseph had died. Can you read the appendix of the Testament of Levi, chapter 1? Well, there's only one chapter. At verse 82 to 94, please. All right. And in the 115th year of my life, that is the year where Joseph, my brother, died, I called my sons and their sons and began to charge them all that was in my heart. I answered and said to my sons, Hear the word of Levi, your father, and hearken to the commands of Elohim, beloved. I give you a charge, my sons, and I show you the truth, my beloved. Let the sum of your works be truth. When calculating what we are doing or thinking, the sum of it must be in truth. Interestingly, Levites are in our heads most of the time, and this shows that we ought to be thinking to ensure our works are in truth. Continue, please. 
and let righteousness abide with you forever. Holding on to the righteous inclination and thoughts within us, continue. And the truth shall bud forth, and to them the harvest is blessed. Then, as we grow in our right mental approach, the truth will bud forth, and it will show in our deeds and in our words. As you can see, our Father, He knows us, and <laughs> so the admonitions He gave us helps us to overcome. Continue, please. He that soweth good, repenteth good. Oh, I'm sorry. He that soweth good, reapeth good. He does repent good too. <laughs> right. It's out of good. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how the good fruits grow in us now because we have some understanding of the process. Go ahead, please. He that soweth evil, his seed returneth upon him. Let's be on guard against envy, anger, wrath. Self will, pride, lust, and fornication, lest these instruments of cruelty we return upon us in the day that we die to accuse us. Continue, please. And now, my sons, a book of instruction and wisdom teach your sons. This was a very important admonition. We have to learn Proverbs and Sirach, the books on instruction and wisdom by the commands of our Father because it'll teach us how to operate and deal properly. Continue, please. And let wisdom be with you in everlasting honor. Our deliverance is dependent on learning the wisdom of the gospel, laws, ordinance, statutes, commandments, and judgments. Because we have to keep the commandments to get wisdom. According to Sirach 1 and 26. So that she may be with us. Can you read Sirach 1 and 26, please? If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. All right. Can you read the appendix of Levi chapter? Now we in verse 89 to 93, please. He that learneth wisdom, she is an honor to him. And whoso despises wisdom is given over to contempt. My sons, behold Joseph, my brother, who gave instruction in the writing and discipline of wisdom. It would have been nice to have the exhortations of that book. Yet, we have Joseph's testament that he left for his children. So it's essential for us to read and get the wisdom he gave for us to grow in our walk, especially since he overcame fornication and malice, not holding any grudge against his brothers who wronged him, both of which things are struggles for Levites that part about malice when it comes to levites a person may not bear a grudge like outwardly but even just being bitter or upset about something the person has done that's the spirit of bitterness working through anger so you can understand just because you might not physically want to try to do something or want to do something but getting engulfed in the emotions of being sad about what happened instead of moving forward that's the same spirit of anger working to drown us in sorrow. Hence, you find a Levi struggle with depression too. Uh, wisdom enlighteneth a man and increaseth his honor to every country and city. All men are to him brothers, though no kin was in it. He is not like a stranger in it, and not like to a stranger in it, and not like an alien in it, for they all give him honor in it for all desire to learn of his wisdom. His friends are many, and they that salute him are great ones. Notice here, upright Levites gain many friends through the Holy Spirit, working the good works and sowing good things in our soul. But in our unrighteousness, you find Levites aren't the best people persons and lack good social skills. It's not uncommon for a Levite to rub people the wrong way initially or over time in social interactions due to the spiritual struggles we face and how we view people and we come off as condescending or judgmental or insensitive or know-it-all or just overbearing. But thankfully, through the admonitions of our Father, we see that can change if we just work that which is good. Can you please? On a seat of honor they place him, to hear the words of his wisdom. 
Great wealth of honor is wisdom, and goodly treasure to all that get her. But Levites, the more we walk in the spirit of wisdom through the fruits and instructions in the books of wisdom, while keeping the commandments to get her, our social interactions will change and our social skills will be in the fruits of the spirit because we will be walking in charity for edification to others by setting an example, being mindful not to set a stumbling block before brethren like Paul teaches, rather than being puffed up in the knowledge of the information that we know from all our studies, walking in hypocrisy within our hearts, not being doers of the things we say. Let's get the rest of Levi's admonitions that he gave when he was about to die after Joseph had already passed. So this is going in his 137th year when he was speaking to the kids at the end of his life. Continue, please, in Testament of Levi, Chapter 13, verse 1 to 2. And now, my children, I command you, fear the Lord your Elohim with your whole heart and walk in simplicity according to all his law. Simplicity is the quality of being easy to understand or do. To walk in simplicity is for all our actions and thoughts to be according to the law and the fruits of the Spirit with no guile or deception in innocence so as to be easy to understand and plain in approach and lifestyle, allowing our words to be supported by our actions. Continue, please. And do you also teach your children letters that they may have understanding all their life, reading unceasingly the law of Elohim? This is essential because we have to get instruction in the books of wisdom and our wisdom is in the law, the books of wisdom and the testimonies. So reading is essential for us. As we talked about before, we're information driven. Filling ourselves with the right information helps us sow good things in our soul. And touch on the law in Deuteronomy 4 and 6 to see where our wisdom lies, please. Keep therefore and do them. Notice it requires for us to keep and do them, not just be hearers or talkers of the statutes. For the laws to be our wisdom in the sight of the nations. Continue, please. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. We shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Notice, when we keep and do the things written for our exhortations and edification, it will deliver us from hypocrisy and the other spiritual struggles. And people, when they hear the statutes, because we're actually doing it, they'll say, Surely this nation is a wise and understanding people you can reference the lesson if we don't walk they won't listen where we go into discussing how it's important to set the example in order to for people to receive the gospel now this is essential for us because our father commands us to learn to read and specifically wants us to read the books of instruction in the wisdom of Allah and reading the law without ceasing he knows what we would face in our inward battle and wants us to have peace of mind through these things. Can you read Testament of God, chapter 7, verse 3? Please. Take out the judgments of the Lord, and thy mind will rest and be at peace. A lot of benefits comes from knowing and keeping the law. Can you continue back to Testament of Levi 13, verse 3 to 7, please? Testament of Levi, chapter 13, verse 3. For everyone that knoweth the law of the Lord shall be honored, and shall not be a stranger whithersoever he goeth. Yea, many friends shall he gain more than his parents, and many men shall desire to serve him, and to hear the law from his mouth. See the rewards of knowing the wisdom of the law. Continue, please. Work righteousness, therefore, my children, upon the earth, that ye may have it as a treasure in heaven, and so good things in your soul that you may find them in your life. But if you sow evil things, you shall reap every trouble and affliction. Get wisdom in the fear of Elohim with diligence. Diligence means careful and persistent work or effort. To get wisdom, it takes attention to detail, brethren. And that's just the beginning of the fear of Ahaya. Can you read Psalms 111 verse 10, please? The fear of Ahia is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endures forever. 
So we see our understanding is shown in doing the commandments rather than head knowledge or how much information we know. The fair Bahaya will instruct us in wisdom to depart from our sins and turn away his wrath from us when he delights in our faith and meekness again. Can you read 1 and 21, please? The fear of the Lord driveth away sins, and where it is present, it turneth away wrath. Our struggle with anger and wrath keeps us from justification by faith. But now we have an opportunity to partake in the patience of the saints that believe in Yahweh Christ. Can you read Sirach 1, verse 22 and 23, please? A furious man cannot be justified, for the sway of his fury shall be his destruction. A patient man would tear for a time, and afterward joy shall spring up unto him. So we see the options we have continue in anger unto not being justified or go through the patience. And sometimes some man, it's going to be some tears being shed as we're working through this. Yet joy will spring up in our hearts from the light shining unto us. And our Lord desires us to walk in this good way. Can you read Luke 8 and 15, please? But that on the good ground are they which in the honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. We must patiently trust the process of being converted to the faith and keep diligence as our Father commanded. Notice. It has to be an honest and good heart. So we firstly have to be honest with ourselves about what we have going on and turn our thoughts unto the good. Our Father, He desires to see us be complete in the faith. He wants us to work righteousness. That's all our physical actions in the earth and to sow good things in our souls. He wants us to be from the heart and in our actions without. So we will be a complete person in the faith of Yahche. Can you read Testament of Levi, continuing chapter 13, verse 7 and 9, please? Testament of Levi, chapter 13, verse 7. Get wisdom in the fear of Allah with diligence. For though there be a leading into captivity, and cities and lands be destroyed, and gold and silver and every possession perish, the wisdom of the wise not can take away, save the blindness of unholiness and the callousness that comes of sin. Levites struggle with being insensitive. Callousness means insensitive or cruel disregard for others. Sadly, in the faith, it's a common struggle that you find Levites to be caught up in studying and information while we would disregard our loved ones, not realizing how it affects them and damages our relationships. We have to be holy and compassionate, considering what's best for everyone, not just ourselves, so we don't fall into the unholiness and callousness that comes from sinning. Continue, please. For one keep itself from these evil things, then even among his enemies shall wisdom be a glory to him. And in a strange country, a fatherland, and in the midst of foes, shall prove a friend. Whosoever teaches noble things and does them shall be enthroned with kings, as was also Joseph, my brother. Amen. As you know, the Simeon and Levi kept mentioning Joseph. And uh, hopefully you can see by now why he was so important, because he overcame the things that these tribes struggle with. Fornication and malice and envy and bitterness. Now, there was something he said there. If one keeps oneself from these evil things, that unholiness and that callousness is important for Levi to avoid being insensitive. I forgot to mention, one can also be insensitive by casting pearl onto swine or mentioning the word of Allah Hayyam. Out of due season where there's any that's not ready for it. Not being sensitive to where people are in their life. Or being patient, waiting on the Lord to bring them around, but trying to drop, just feed them with information to convert them when it's only pushing them further away because they're not ready to receive seed. That's something we have to be mindful of, just as in God and in the ground has to be broken up in order for the seed to be properly placed in the earth. You have to give the Lord his space to 
to do what he does to prepare people to receive the word, lest you cast the seed by the wayside. And it'd be a reproach unto us for not being patient and speaking in due season. Um, okay. Now I want to touch on something, hypocrisy. To overcome hypocrisy, Levi had to do right things, not only speak well. Our words and our deeds have to sum up the truth. Hypocrisy is a common trait of Levites. We have to take heed of how we operate and what we speak. Can you read Sirach chapter 1, verse 29, please? Be not a hypocrite in the sight of men, and take good heed what thou speakest. Levites struggle in hypocrisy like the Pharisees, who are inwardly unjust, though they seem righteous on the outside. Can you read Matthew chapter 25, verse 25, please? Uh, Matthew 23 and 25. I got you, man. I messed it up? Yeah, he said 25 and 25. Oh, man. I'm okay. sorry. Thank you. Woe well, unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. The Pharisees were into looking good in the sight of men by wearing the long fringes and carrying big books and boasting of the law to seem upright in the sight of men, which is what is meant by making clean the outside of the cup, seeming good outwardly, but within they were unrighteous. This is the case with the Levites. You'll find that Levites seem righteous in the sight of men, though they are not the same person as they portray to you in their hearts through the issues of unrighteousness in our inner man. In layman's terms, Levi struggle with vainglory through pride in the attention we get from seeming good in the sight of men wanting to be liked, although we aren't being authentic about how we really feel within or what we really have going on within. Usually you'll find a Levite is really alone at heart, not truly connected with folks within, though they may have friends and all, but in their hearts, they're not truly connected with many folks, if any, because they don't show people their true selves. It's the struggle for Levites to just be sincere and genuine in words and in actions because of the ulterior motives within. Hermas is an example of how he had to overcome lying to speak truly with folks. They don't really show their true selves wanting to seem a certain way in the sight of men or wanting to be liked or for fear of what others would think. Levites can be actors, to put it simply. But if you're around them long enough, they can't keep the act up for long, just as the evil spirits can't stay in the firmament for long because there's no power in them. The believers, on the other hand, will be strengthened by the everlasting life in Yache and his mother, the Holy Spirit, consistent in well-doing. The Pharisees really help understand the Levites. Can you read Matthew 23, verse 2 to 3, please? I am the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But, but do not ye after their works, for they say, and do not. We tend to tell others what they should do. And even come off as judgmental, sense in their lives, due to the struggle with callousness, being insensitive. But we don't do the things we say, having unrighteousness dwelling in us, that we need to deal with ourselves. To overcome this, Levites need to focus on our own walk to cleanse within our own hearts through prayer, works of faith, and a change of mind, so that we can see clearly having the beam out of our own eye to do good works in truth from the heart that our words may actually profit others because our actions align with our speech. Can you read Proverbs 11 and 9, please? An hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. We destroy our neighbor because when they see we don't do what we say, they don't believe the gospel because we aren't obeying it ourselves. Again, visit that lesson. If you don't want, they don't listen for further edification on that. Continue, please. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. The just speaks truth and his deeds sum up to truth because he's doing it through knowledge. So he would actually be able to help his neighbor. Right? 
continue to Matthew 23, verse 26, please. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Levites need inward cleansing from the unrighteousness within our hearts and minds so that we won't be hypocrites in the sight of Allah and men. You read Testament of Levi, chapter 14, verse 1. We're going, we're going to read the whole chapter, it looks like. Please. Therefore, my children, I have learned that at the end of the ages, you will transgress against the Lord, stretching out hands to wickedness against him. And to all the Gentiles shall you become a scorn. For our father Israel is pure from the transgressions of the chief priests, who shall lay their hands upon the Savior of the world. For as the heaven is purer in the Lord's sight than the earth, so also be ye. The lights of Israel shall be as the sun, purer than all the Gentiles. But if ye be darkened through transgressions, what, therefore, will all the Gentiles do living in blindness? The salvation of the Gentile depends on the children of Levi being a light unto them. Continue, please. Yea, he shall bring a curse upon our race. The curse on the race of Israel is due to the children of Levi directly. Continue, please. Because the light of the law which was given for to lighten every man, this ye desire to destroy by teaching commandments contrary to the ordinances of Allah. The reason being because we create our own commandments contrary to the ordinances of Allah, just like the Pharisees did it in the days of Christ. Continue, please. The offering to the Lord you shall rob, and from his portion shall you steal choice portions, eating them contemptuously with harlots. The sons of Eli, the priest, in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12 to 17, did exactly as Levi prophesied. Unrighteous Levi struggled with robbing and stealing, just like Judas was a thief. Another struggle for Levites is that we have an affinity to harlots. Hence, Isaac, our father, said not to marry a harlot or easy woman for layman's terms. And out of covetousness, ye shall teach the commandments of the Lord. Covetousness leads us astray in the commands to teach according to our desire. Example, the Pharisees stealing from people's parents with Corban in Mark 7 and 11. And Judas Iscariot talking about selling the ointment because he was a thief in John 12, verse 5 and 6. Continue, please. Levi's really got to watch that spirit of covetousness because that, that spirit leads us to self-will. And that's where a lot of the Levites fall into it. Just not the priests that will fall into it. The Levites will fall into it on a day-to-day -day basis. So being covetous or not being content with the things that you have or wanting something that somebody else has, or wanting something, you know, and not being content with the thing that Elohim has given unto you, leads Levi into being covetous and operating in self-will and guile towards others. Amen. That's the truth. Whenever you're ready, you can continue, please. Okay. What at women shall you pollute? You'll find us in adultery. Can't be faithful in relationships. I forgot to mention that wedded women shall you pollute. Do that same covetousness. And we talked in the first lesson about envy and jealousy, how we'll cover what someone else has. You'll find we'll get stuck wanting a woman that's somebody else's. That's a struggle. All right, continue, please. The virgins of Jerusalem shall you defile. And with the virgins of Jerusalem, we'll be fornicating with virgins rather than marrying them, as is the right thing to do. Right. Now, there's something to touch on here. As it says, Levites will pollute wedded women and defile virgins. Notice the wedded women get polluted by Levites. Through precept, the pollution of the mind comes from the looking upon another's beauty to lust after them, which is adultery in the heart. Hence, a Levite may not merely sleep with a wedded woman to pollute her. As jealousy dwells in fornication, he may desire another man's wife.
yet he may not act on that desire to sleep with her, but he may entice her to lust after him by associating with her, or constant meetings, or adorning himself with the intent of drawing her attention, or carrying himself in a manner to entice her to look at him or desire him, which would pollute her mind, though she is married to another, because she lusted after him in her heart, which is adultery in her heart. So Levites have to be mindful of the laws of not being involved with another man's wife, or thinking about another man's wife, to help them avoid the spirit of fornication, enticing them to do such things. Also the daughters of Levi, you have to be on guard against fornication as well, keeping the commands for you to flee from fornication, guarding your senses against men, following Reuben's admonition to keep from polluting the mind of a man that is not your husband to lust after or desire you in his heart, and also keeping yourself pure in mind by following Reuben's admonitions not to associate with men. The women's series is really helpful for sisters and also be on the lookout for an upcoming lesson on understanding fornication to help everyone of all nations be aware of this spirit and overcome it. Continue, please. And with harlots and adulteresses shall you be joined. And the daughters of Gentiles shall you take to wife, purifying them with unlawful purification. There is that affinity to harlot and women that are prone to cheat on their husbands. The priests and Levites in Nehemiah's time, in Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 22 to 30, help substantiate our struggle with marrying unrighteous women. You also find Levites have an affinity to foreign women, women that are not of the children of Israel. Hence, you find taking the daughters of the Gentiles to wife. And to be specific now, the daughters of the Gentiles are truly unbelievers of the Gentiles right. because, thank you, a believing woman is a daughter of Abraham by faith. For example, Moses, he took Zipporah, a woman who he spent time with, spent a long time nurturing the relationship. She believed in Elohim and he married her, all righteous. She's not a daughter of the Gentiles. She's Abraham's daughter. But the Levites, as our fathers tell us of what will befall us, we will be cleaved to harlots, adulteresses, and daughters of the Gentiles being unbelieving women. Or lawless. We'll be taken, or lawless, yes, taking them in unlawful purification because we're not supposed to marry unbelievers. Right? It's for clarity. The only the sons of Aaron are literally not permitted to marry a woman that is not of the seed of the house of Israel. It's not pertaining to all the Levites. That's why you had Moses married to the poor of the Midianite, but Aaron was married to a Judite woman, um, Nashan sister, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, mm -hmm. Continue, please. And your union shall be like unto Sodom and Gomorrah. Relationships of Sodom and Gomorrah didn't have any fidelity. So you find that Levite relationships struggled to stay faithful on either party's part or both possibly. And remember, there's also spiritual fornication. So the infidelity may be in the mind where they're not faithful to one another in their thoughts or in their inclinations. Levi's struggle with fornication can help understand how fidelity would be an issue for an unbeliever in Levi. One might say, I'm faithful, but the issue with Levi is within. So just because he literally won't cheat doesn't mean he doesn't look upon a woman to lust after her or thinks about her unrighteously committing adultery in his heart like the brother Hermas had done in his growth process. Um, continue, please. And you shall be puffed up because of your priesthood. There, Levi call out the struggle the children of Aaron would be facing, being puffed up. A puffed up person is a very proud person who is proud of themselves or think they're very important. So you'll find that Aaron's children have an ego when in unbelief. The Levites altogether struggle with all spirits of pride attack them as well, as we have covered before. Continue, please. Lifting yourselves up against men. 
and not only so, but also against the commands of Elohim. Aaron's children struggle with this. You'll find an example of lifting ourselves up when we required people to keep the traditions of the elders, laying aside the commands of Elohim in Mark chapter 7, verse 6 to 9. And also lifting ourselves up against men. If you remember the story where the blind man got healed and he had spoke rightly to the Pharisees, but they rebuked him just because he was somebody that was formerly a sinner that got healed. Like, as if he wasn't good enough to even to speak to them or tell them anything. All right. Um, continue, please. For ye shall contemn the holy things with jest and laughter. Levites have a bad sense of humor, especially when it pertains to things of Elohim. Continue, please. Therefore, the temple which the Lord shall choose shall be laid waste through your uncleanness. The struggle with the spirits of pride and covetousness, unholiness and callousness, and foolish jesting made us unclean. We didn't give heed to the commands of our Father to be on guard against all uncleanness. Hopefully this helps understand unclean spirits also defile us, not just eating unclean food, for example. Continue, please. And you shall be captive throughout all nations, and you shall be an abomination unto them. And you shall receive reproach and everlasting shame from the righteous judgment of Elohim. And all who hate you shall rejoice at your destruction. And if you were not to receive mercy through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our fathers, now one of our seeds should be left upon the earth. There we see that confirms the Levites come from the slaves. And there will be a, an abomination unto the nations. And even the sons of Aaron in the book of Malachi, it tells how they will be base among the people. That's why you find Levites are in some of the worst conditions in the earth today. You know, a lot of people from Haiti are Levites to be straight. But they're in one of the worst conditions in the world. But they are scattered Le through, throughout the whole earth. So you can find Levites anywhere. Of yep. course, a, a lot of the majority of them went to Haiti because of the captivity, but right. they're, they're scattered throughout all the Americas, um, uh, Europe, uh, uh, Australia, I'm pretty sure they're there. Um, I mean, it's just, the scriptures are true. All the tribes have been scattered to the four corners of the earth. So, it's just certain places right. you can find them predominantly where they're in bigger numbers. Yeah. The probability, particularly off the slave trade, for whatever reason, the French ships, like I come, my family comes from Down Island in the Caribbean and Guadeloupe. Those French ships also made their way to Haiti. So a lot of people from the uh, Lesser Antilles and such, you find a lot of Levites from there as well. Netherlands, because they end up Dutch took control. They got Levites in the Netherlands and such. So they're all over for real. And Levites are in bad case, brethren, as you can easily understand at this point. And our race was almost to be wiped out upon the earth. Can you read Levi, Testament of Levi, chapter 16, verse 1 to 5, please? And now I have learned that for 70 weeks she shall go astray and profane the priesthood and pollute the sacrifices. And ye shall make void the law, and set it not the words of the prophets by evil perverseness. Now, the definition of perverseness is the quality of being morally wrong in principle or practice, deliberate and stubborn unruliness and resistance to guidance or discipline. Pride causes perverseness, and for this reason, Levites make void the law and set it not the prophets. Be on the lookout for the lesson on overcoming pride to come in the near future for further edification. Continue reading, please. And you shall persecute righteous men. Levites give righteous people a hard time, envying them and critiquing everything they do, just like the Pharisees did to Yahshua and anyone that believed in him. Continue, please. And hate the holy, the words of the faithful shall ye abhor. Levites struggle with receiving correction in the faith due to the struggle with pride, stubbornness, which comes from pride, 
and wanting to seem like we got it together in the sight of men, not understanding how righteous it is to be humble and receiving correction and confessing our faults for our growth as examples of believers. Continue, please. And a man who reneweth the law and the power of the Most High, you shall call a deceiver. And at last you shall rush upon him to slay him, not knowing his dignity, taking innocent blood through wickedness upon your heads. This is what transpired with Yache, and the Levites stirred the people to take his blood upon the house of Israel, and that guiltiness falls upon the whole nation now too. Continue, please. And your holy places shall be laid waste even to the ground because of him, and you shall have no place that is clean. But you shall be among the Gentiles a curse and a dispersion until he shall again visit you, and in pity shall receive you through faith and water. It's literally faith in Yache and receiving his baptism, he will have pity to receive us through. That's great pity to have after all our tribe has done. And it's an example of the pity we ought to walk in for others, not rendering evil for evil or bearing a grudge like he is toward us. And he had Joseph set the example through his spirit to our fathers in the past. Now, our father said he would tell us what we would do and what would befall us. So let's get the rest of the story to understand. Chapter 17, please, of Testament of Levi. And whereas ye have heard concerning the 70 weeks, hear also concerning the priesthood. For in each jubilee there shall be a priesthood. And in the first jubilee, the first who is anointed to the priesthood shall be great and shall speak to Elohim as to a father. As Moses, according to Numbers chapter 12, verse 7 and 8. And his priesthood shall be perfect with the Lord. And in the day of his gladness shall he arise for the salvation of the world. In the second jubilee, he that is anointed shall be conceived in the sorrow of beloved ones. That's Aaron, according to Joshua, chapter 67, verse 4. And his priesthood shall be honored and shall be glorified by all. Sirach, chapter 45, verse 6 to 17, showed Aaron was honored. It's interesting that we got to see Aaron and Moses' growth, fall, and works of repentance through being found holy men and meek in the sight of Allah Hayyam, though we can read of their shortcomings. Hopefully this helps understand, judge none before the time, because Allah Hayyam is the spiritual one who judges man in his sight, and he can make a person go upright according to his will. Continue, please. And the third priest shall be taken hold of by sorrow, and the fourth shall be in pain, because unrighteousness shall gather itself against him exceedingly, and all Israel shall hate each one his neighbor. The fifth shall be taken hold of by darkness, likewise also the sixth and the seventh. And then the seventh shall be such pollution as I cannot express before men, for they shall know it who do these things. Therefore shall they be taken captive and become a prey, and their land and their substance shall be destroyed. That's the Babylonian captivity. Continue, please. And in the fifth week, they shall return to their desolate country and shall renew the house of the Lord. That's Joshua, the son of Jehozadak's time during the Persian Empire. And in the seventh week shall become priests who are idolaters, adulterers, lovers of money, proud, lawless, lascivious, abusers of children and beasts. These specifics pertain to Aaron's children to help identify them as opposed to the rest of the Levites. These are spiritual struggles to identify the children of Aaron specifically and how they are operating today when in unbelief. Aaron's sons struggle with the love of money, pride, lawlessness, lasciviousness, abusing children and beasts. Abusing isn't regulated to physical abuse. There is emotional, mental, and physical you can find an example of child abuse in Eli. He was neglectful to raise his children the right way, leaving them to themselves and not correcting them. Then you have Hermas, whose children were struggling. They were struggling to do right, 
but he neglected them and was busy with his business affairs and not taking the time to teach them and raise them in the nurture of the Lord. Then you have the other spectrum of physical abuse because from the spirit of anger and the struggle with violence, when Levites would beat their children severely or be verbally abusive in speech or emotionally abused, neglecting them through the lack of encouragement or affection or showing appreciation for anything they do. Continue in Testament of the Levites, chapter 18, verse 1 to 14, please. And after that punishment shall have come from the Lord, the priesthood shall fail. Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD, and no priest left to minister. The punishment isn't up until the indignation be accomplished in these end times. So the punishment is ongoing up until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled, according to Luke 21. Verse 20 to 24. Continue, please. And then shall the Lord raise up a new priest. Yache, Melchizedek, in his kingdom. And to him all the words of the Lord shall be revealed. And he shall execute a righteous judgment upon the earth for a multitude of days. A thousand year reign will be a multitude of days. Continue, please. And his star shall arise in heaven as of a king. Lighten up the light of knowledge as the sun of the day, and he shall be magnified in the world. He shall shine forth as the sun on the earth, and shall remove all darkness from under heaven, and there shall be peace in all the earth. Baruch the Levite attested in Second Baruch chapter 73 and 74 there will be tranquility in the kingdom of Christ. Continue, please. The heaven shall exalt in his days and the earth shall be glad, and the clouds shall rejoice, and the knowledge of the Lord shall be poured forth upon the earth as the water of the seas. And the angels of the glory of the presence of the Lord shall be glad in him. The heavens shall be opened, and from the temple of glory shall come upon him sanctification, with the Father's voice as from Abraham to Isaac, and the glory of the Most High shall be uttered over him. Matthew 3 and 17. And the spirit of understanding and sanctification shall rest upon him in the water. Matthew 3 and 16. For he shall give the majesty of the Lord to his sons in truth forevermore. And there shall none succeed him for all generations forever. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 6. And in his priesthood the Gentiles shall be multiplied in knowledge upon the earth and enlightened through the grace of the Lord. In the kingdom, the Gentiles are going to be calling the Israelites the ministers of our Elohim. And then in Zechariah chapter 8, it tells how the Gentiles are going to be grabbing onto him that is a Jew, saying, we know that Elohim is with you. They're going to be saying to each other, hey, let's go up unto the house of the Lord and pray. Because the house of the Lord is going to be a house of prayer for all nations, according to Isaiah 56. So in the kingdom, they're going to be enlightened. And Paul already started that process in Romans chapter 15. Continue, please. This priesthood shall sin come to an end, and the lawless shall cease to do evil, and the just shall rest in him, and he shall open the gates of paradise, and shall remove the threatening sword against Adam, and he shall give to the saints to eat from the tree of life, and the spirit of holiness shall be on them, and Belier shall be bound by him, and he shall give his power to his children to tread upon the evil spirits. And the Lord shall rejoice in his children and be well pleased in his beloved ones forever. Then shall Abraham and Isaac and Jacob exalt. And I will be glad and all the saints shall clothe themselves with joy. Chapter 19, verse 1 to 5, please. And now, my children, you have heard all. Choose, therefore, for yourself either the light or the darkness either the law of the Lord or the works of Belier. He told us all that shall be, so we can make a knowledgeable choice. Continue, please. And his sons answered him, saying, Before the Lord we will walk according to his law. And their father said unto them, The Lord is witness, and his angels are witness, and you are witnesses, and I am witness concerning the word of your mouth. And his son said unto him, We are witnesses. It comes down to a wholehearted choice for Levi. May we choose the right thing in words and in deeds.
And thus Levi ceased commanding his sons, and he stretched out his feet on the bed and was gathered to his fathers, after he had lived a hundred and thirty-seven years. And they laid him in a coffin, and afterwards they buried him in Hebron with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There we see, hopefully helps understand what interact with Levites. All you can do is speak what's going on and leave them to make a choice. They have to walk it out. Moses spake of the blessings of Levi. Can you read Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 1, and then verse 8 to 11, please? All right. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 1. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of Elohim, blessed the children of Israel before his death. Deuteronomy 33 and 8. And of Levi he said, Let thy Thummim and thy Urim be with thy Holy One, whom thou didst prove in Massa, and with whom thou didst strive at the waters of Meribah. The Holy One is Yache. Continue, please. Who said unto his father and to his mother, I have not seen him, neither did he acknowledge his brethren, nor knew his own children. For they have observed thy word and kept thy covenant. Moses knew the pitiful case Levites would be in through transgression. So he's reminding Allah of the good Levites that did right so that Allah would be merciful to save the seed of the righteous ones. Continue, please. They shall teach Jacob thy judgments and Israel thy law. They shall put incense before thee and hold burnt sacrifice upon thine altar. In the kingdom, the Levites and priests will be restored to their former glory. Can you please? Bless the Lord his substance, and accept the works of his hands. Smite through the loins of them that raise against him, and of them that hate him, that they rise not again. Moses had to pray, Ahaya, bless our substance and accept our works on the iniquity we would be in, in hopes that Ahaya would have mercy to accept the work of our hands and leave us a remnant for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's sake. And for these reasons, the Holy One, Yache, will receive the remnant of Levi in pity through faith and water baptism. We, the tribe of Levi, are in a bad case through the instruments of cruelty discussed in these lessons. Yet by the grace of Allah, I am a remnant of the seed of the righteous ones of old shall be converted and saved. Knowing how much Levi is going through, it will truly be a testament to the strength and power in the name and faith of Yahshua Christ to see that remnant turn unto Allah. And may we be among the number pressing forward towards the mark. And with that, hopefully this was edifying for those of for everyone. And also, hopefully, people that are of the tribe of Levi get an understanding of who they are and what's going on within and how to overcome. All right. Zachary, you got anything? Um, I think I was, uh, covered a lot between the four lessons. I think it covered it. I think it covered uh, some of it. Yeah. Levi is Levi. I am of this tribe. Thank they, have very, feeling. they have certain things that are very similar to Benjamin, which is interesting. So I can pull it With up. the mind thing? Yes. Right. Uh, Benjamin, one of the things that was going on with Benjamin is they had a problem with having a bad mind. I'm in Testament of Benjamin, chapter 3, verse 1. Do ye also therefore, my children, love Ahiah, Elohim of heaven and earth, and keep his commandments, following the example of the good and holy man, Joseph, which they bring up Joseph as well, which is interesting. And let your mind be unto good, even as ye know me. For he that hath his mind right, seeth all things rightly. Fear ye, Ahiah, and love your neighbor. And even though the spirit of Belial claim you to afflict you with every evil, Yes, shall they not have dominion over you, even as they had not over Joseph, my brother. So, I just wanted to make it quick. Could have definitely hopped into that a lot. But just having a good mind, that's why Levi struggles with intention. They might have good intentions, but it comes out evil because their mind isn't good. Levites have a sense of tricking themselves in their mind to justify what they're doing, to make it seem good. 
or to make it seem like it's not about them. And that's the problem that Levi f falls into. It's because you're not going into things with the right intentions. You don't have the right mind going into things. And then it pretty much the thing that you were really trying to do comes to light. And then everything that you've done is for naught because you didn't do it in the right heart in the first place. So it's, uh, it's a very important thing to work on being simplistic, operating in simplicity and not operating in, in covetousness and, and being sincere in your works. So that, that, that's a big thing for Levi. Thank you. That scripture, what he talks about having that good mind, the devil came to overcome you even though he afflicts you. That's why our father was telling us to sow good things in our soul so that we would reap it. So we have a treasure in heaven and we'll reap it in our life. Because just like Joseph and Benjamin mentioned, you're gonna, we're going to be afflicted. We're going to be attacked with the thoughts and the evil inclination. But if we don't agree with it in our mind, and always correct the thought with the good inclination and what the law says, like some covetous thought comes up, remembering the commandments and correcting the thought will not be overcome, even as Joseph was it. So to help understand this is true. It's true. Uh, Sabbath of Thailand, Brother Hanu. We hope you are uh, enjoying your Feast of Tabernacle. I know you had to go in and we had a whole week. Uh, Sister Lita, Sabbath to Chalam. Uh, Deborah, Sabbath to Chalam. Hope you're having a good day. Um, Brother Babakuya, Sabbath to Chalam family. I hope you're enjoying your feast as well. Uh, Johnny Mendez, Sabbath to Chalam. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sabbath to Chalam, Brother William Joseph, Sabbath to Chalam. Uh, I just want to touch on that real quick. Did anybody have any questions on the lesson? Was there anything that needed to be clarified on or expounded on that anybody didn't didn't understand fully? If you can, just write in the chat below or send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com. And if you do want to send us an email, just let us know. Say, I'll send you an email. If you're interested in being a member of Hebrew Readers Church, please just send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com. Um, we'll definitely look forward to getting that inquiry in from you guys. You know, just putting the information out there. Do you have any other um, updates that you need to give, Brother Cosmo? We're updating the um, 12 Tribe series. The playlist is going through the videos and condensing the information and adding whatever needs to be added clarity. You know, Alahayim is, this is a growing process and we're learning new things just as everybody else. In some of that, we really appreciate when you guys come with the questions, things like that, because there's always something to learn, something to grow in. So that playlist, you'll see the videos coming up. Uh, we'll just be putting them, plugging them back into the playlist and at the proper spots. So that playlist will be up to date and more concise and clear for everyone to help ease the identifying the tribes and understanding the spiritual indicators and the cures to overcome the things we face respectively. Right? And, and for the Gentiles, you'll find you probably identify with the tribe of Dan and the tribe of Levi more than anybody because both tribes struggle with the spirits that are more that Satan really used wrath, lying, anger, hatred, envy. So, so there's edification for everyone. Thank you, Zach. Oh, we got a question from Brother Michael. Uh, can you explain the Testament of Levi 17, chapter 17, 10 and 11? Chapter 17, 10 and 11. Let's see. Uh, I'll read it for you. Find it. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> like, where is that at? <laughs> um, I'll start it. I'll start it. Um, somewhere at, like close to eight. Therefore, shall they be taken captive and become a prey, and their land and their substance shall be destroyed. 
And in the fifth week, they shall return to their desolate country and shall renew the house of Ahiah. And in the seventh week shall become priests who are idolaters, adulterers, lovers of money, proud, lawless, lascivious, abuse of the children and beasts. You said verse 10 through 11, you said? Yeah. And in the fifth week, they shall return to their desolate country. Yeah, they did return. When you, you can read the book of Ezra and Nehemiah to see the return. And Zechariah also. And they were led back under Joshua, the Levite, and Zerubbabel, the Judite. So that's during the Persian Empire. In the seventh week, that's going on from that time forward. That's why he just says the seventh week and then goes on to what's going to happen in the end that Christ will come after because the sons of Aaron specifically, those traits are going to be found upon his children all the way on to the end until they're converted into the faith. You find them in idolatry. Remember, idolatry is not merely making graven images or literally bound down to an actual statue. Remember, Zach, what mentioned being way of covetousness for the children of Levi. According to Colossians, covetousness is also idolatry. So the sons of Aaron can be found in covetousness, which makes them idolaters as well. Also, you can find in the book of Baruch, in the Apocrypha, in chapter, chapter 1, about verse 22, it tells how we went according to the imaginations of our own heart after strange idols. So when we're hearkening to these instruments of cruelty within us and walking according to our own mind through self-will we are idolaters and then they're adulterers you find they through covetousness the sons of aaron they covet other people's wives or other people's have and they end up wanting other people's women or actually seeking other people's women the lovers of money sons of aaron specifically struggle with trusting in money like when things are bad, we don't turn to Allah and we look, we look at, oh, I don't have enough money. Money is what actually, it makes us um, comfortable. Yes, we're, we're comfortable when we have money, but we'll be all in sorts if we don't. Proud. Aaron's children struggle with pride and being puffed up and lifting themselves up against men and Allah as Levi mentioned earlier. Lawless. Aaron's children establish their own law walking according to their own mind, creating laws out of covetousness. And then lascivious, that's where, that's all us. If I remember that definition of that word. The definition is of a person, manner or gesture, feeling or revealing an overt or often offensive sexual desire. So this is something the sons of Aaron struggle with. Isaac warned us about being on guard against all lust and Aaron's children struggle with that. It may not literally be lusting after women. It could be a lust for information, a lust for attention, a lust for power, a lust for control. You just won't. The lust is manifold and that kind of, you can identify with Reuben. We, Levites, can identify with Reuben because of that lust, that struggle with lust for everything. And then the abusers of children and beasts. There's physical, mental, or emotional abuse. Either one, Aaron's children will be found abusing. But that's what the children of Aaron specifically will be found doing. And that helps differentiate them from the rest of the Levites. Now, mind you, every son of Aaron isn't exactly the same. So some may struggle with these different spiritual indicators that identify them more than others to help understand the sons of Aaron. And I think what was the that was it, right? That was it. Okay, thanks. Hope that answered your question, Brother Michael. Yeah. Um, Brother Hanu has a question. Question is there a difference between Shem Ham and Japheth Gentiles and their struggles? You have to interact with the different tribes. I can't there's not a book specifically on and identifying all the Gentiles for me to say, go by this scripture and such and such and such. You have to interact with people to get to know them and let the Lord reveal it. Some um, of the Gentiles, there is information on them. 
by looking through the records and looking through the, uh, you know, it, it, and picking up how they were operating. But some of them, it doesn't yes. give it as much information. Right. Uh, Jason Trotter, if you could, just give the brother our, our, our lessons and allow him to do his good pleasure and turn the brother's heart around. So hopefully that'll work for you with your endeavor to, to, to deal with this brother. Because he's a Levite. All you can do is give him the information. He has to choose whether or not he wants to accept it or not. There's nothing that you can do. You can't convince him. It's just not going to happen. Thanks. Pray for him. That's what you right. can do. Definitely. Beg Yachi to help him. Open him up. Yes, indeed. All right, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. We hope everybody else enjoys the rest of the Sabbath day. And those that are going into the Feast of Tabernacles, we hope you enjoy the Feast of Tabernacles. And I have blessed it for you all because he blessed it after High Holy Day. Um, and may you enjoy your family and your loved ones. So uh, with that, Dr. Talum. Oh, we got to pray. Yes, we do. Thank you. I appreciate that. Our Father, who art in heaven. I love you in thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Heavenly Father, Hayalahayam, we thank you. We thank you for the people. We thank you for health. We thank you for all things, Father, in which thou givest unto us, for thou hast not forsaken us in anything. Neither hast thou allowed us to, to be wanting for anything, but thou hast given us everything that we need. And for that we thank you, for that we glorify you. For well, that's the same thing that you did unto our forefather Jacob. He said, if you will give me everything, I'll serve you forever. And we give you the same honor, Father, that we may serve you forever. For thou art the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And thou keepest thy people, and strengtheneth them to do good. And for that we pray over the whole body of Meshiach and Yache. We pray for the Gentiles. We pray for the children of Israel. We pray for all men that they may be converted, and that they may serve the true living Elohim of heaven and earth. We magnify you and we thank you for the Feast of Tabernacles. And may the holy name be exalted. In the name of Yahche, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Shalom, family. Everybody have a wonderful day. Peace and blessings. HRC, 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 HRC,